Hey, how you doing? It's Kirsten Lee Belt. Good to see you guys tonight. I thought I would jump on. You know, it's so funny because with the time change, it's actually only eight. No. Yes, it's only 830, right? Even though it's 930. I'm in Minnesota, so I'm Central Standard Time. But I'm like, with the time change, I'm feeling like obviously it's off but i think i think i'm right on time <laughs> anyway thanks for all the hearts you're so sweet good to see you okay so i wanted to jump on for a couple of reasons tonight very specifically um because so when okay we're going to talk about insulin resistance and brain fog and did you know that brain fog was my very very first hey sue good to see you Brain fog. Oh, 1030 in New Jersey. Very cool. Yep. So, okay. So when we lose an hour, that means it goes ahead. So actually right now it's, it's a, we're, our brains think that it's an hour earlier, right? So instead of 930 here, it's really, I'm feeling like it's 830. You're feeling like it's 930. Am I right? Is this right? Yeah, I think I'm right. So anyway, so I'm like, I'm not late. I'm right on time. Like, you know, that's just how it goes. So anyway, um, but I want to jump on because, okay, there are a couple of different things. So the first thing so that I can catch everybody as you are jumping on, if you're on replay, always tell me you're on replay and then um, tell me where you're coming in from because I like to know that. But 728 in Oregon. Yes. Okay. I'm right. Okay. I'm glad I'm right. <laughs> Thanks for helping me out there. Um, but what I was going to say is, okay, so there is a the, uh, part of my, my subject title is on my, my first to know list. And the reason why I'm doing that is because um, now on Instagram, I always have to make this disclaimer. You guys, if you put anything in the comments, I can't see it. Massachusetts, Colorado, you guys. Oh, my gosh. So good to see you. But if you're on Instagram and you put Indiana, oh my God, we're going to do all 50 states. Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado. How does that go? I remember learning that song in elementary school. Alabama. Alabama, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut. Right? Does anybody else know this song? Am I the only one? I can't be the only one. California. <laughs> That's hysterical. Dallas. Oh my gosh, you guys on Instagram, you're hysterical. Iowa. Oh, you guys are so funny. That is hilarious. Okay, so Oh, that's so funny. Um, okay, so what was I going to say? So now I don't... Tennessee! <laughs> ah, this is so funny. And I'm from Minnesota. Um, but hold on, hold on. My my thought is coming back to me. It's coming back to me right now. This is really kind of funny because I'm going to talk about brain fog here in just a second. <laughs> Chicago, Chicago, you're like my neighbor. We're only like maybe... I think I could probably drive to Chicago in seven hours, six to seven hours. I like coming to Chicago. We go there for business. So that's really cool. Malaysia, OMG. That's crazy. So, okay. So before I forget, and I'll repeat this at the end too. If you're on Instagram and you comment while I'm on live, it disappears, poof, into the atmosphere. And then I don't get to see it. So you have to either DM me or you have to comment after the video has been posted. However, if you are one of my customers who knows that the glucose product is out of stock, it is sold out status, sold out, put, um, I was having people put me in my stories. Do I want me? Hold on. I got to think about this first to know list. You can just put me in the comments, put me. And I will put you on my first to know list. Like, so that's just a housekeeping detail because I'm creating a list because I want to be able to do some, um, a, a team of girls and myself, we are going to be doing a first to know list so that we can do some giveaways, some sampler packet giveaways to all of y'all who are being so incredibly patient with this amazing sold out status. So I want to make sure that I say that first. Okay. So you can put me Australia. That's fantastic. Um, put me in the comments if that is you, and I'll repeat that at the end as well, because that's the first to know list if you want to be first to know when it gets back in, because I'm like a hawk, I'm paying attention. Um, okay, so brain fog was my first issue when I was in my 40s. Anybody else has brain fog? Hit your universe. 
And I wanted to talk about that tonight because in chatting with people behind the scenes, sometimes it is hard. I see that, Nancy. Um, I'll write you down. So when you are working to make a change, so last week we did the live five day challenge in the in the Facebook group. And, um, you know, we always talk, I always talk about like, let's conquer the beginning of the month and then let's take on the rest of the month, right? So we had our challenge. And so now it's like, it's, it's, let, let's like nail down what we can control and nail down for the month. And then we'll do another challenge at the beginning of April. And when, when it comes to, you know, we can get really excited. We can get, yeah, brain fog is terrible. I know. And I'm going to talk about why this is and how, what you can do about it. Um, but it is, it, it's, it's like, we get this like excitement, motivation, inspiration, to make a change and, and do something different. And we're kind of like all pumped up, so to speak. And then like brain fog or exhaustion takes over. And when you are insulin resistant, these are super common. And so then you feel like you're, you're, it's like you're walking through mud, like mud up to your, you know, your knees, and you just can't quite move forward in what your intentions were in the moment that you were excited, motivated, or inspired. And that can be really, really frustrating. And so I remember when I was in my 40s and I was working um, in a medical um, situation, I needed to be able to multitask at a higher level. Now I'm 59. So this was a, a little bit ago. I'm right around 45 at the time. And like my ability to multitask was not there. And that can make you feel super vulnerable as a female in the workforce. It can make you feel um, like what's wrong with me. It can make you feel like, is this what it feels like just to get old? Um, and then, of course, you want to do your best job, right? You want to you want to perform well. And you're like, how do I get rid of this? I wasn't making any connections. So I tell the story all the time, like, you know, even though I was insulin resistant in my 20s, my dad died of type 2 diabetes when I'm 30. Even still, when I get into my 40s and I've not done anything because I wasn't really putting everything together, I had no idea that brain fog had anything to do with hormones. And, and if you don't know, insulin is a hormone. That's a really big key. Like, I want every female to hear that sentence because I feel like this is this is the game changer for most women. Because if you are insulin resistant, insulin is a key to unlock your weight loss. It's an actual key. And so this is how I kind of went through all of these phases and on this journey. And then I reverse engineered why things happened to me and why what I did worked. That's how this has gone for me. So going back to the, um, so, so when you're insulin resistant, if you do not know this, and if you think that you are, what happens is um, over time, your body, so your body like works really amazing, amazingly well in your pancreas is, I mean, assuming that everything's perfect, right? Your pancreas is putting out insulin to combat sugars that you're eating and keeping everything regulated, right? So this hormone is keeping everything regulated. Well, after a certain amount of time, and of course, I'm not a doctor. So this is totally layman understanding of just the things that I've read. Your cell gets so stuffed and whether it's the defense of itself, like it's, it, it doesn't want any more toxic insulin inside of it. I, you know, I, I don't know if I would say it that way necessarily, but at some point it becomes resistant to, to insulin trying to get the fuel into the cell. It says no more. And the craziest thing that we probably don't know and who have never been taught as women is that insulin is called the fat storing hormone. Like maybe we should have been told this because then maybe we would have paid attention in school or something. I don't know, but nobody tells us this stuff. So what happens is then when it can't get the fuel into the cell, it takes it and says, well, I'm a fat storing hormone. So I'm going to take this fuel and I'm going to store it as fat. And you pick the part of your body that's been the worst because that's just the way that it goes. Oftentimes it's a belly fat. And it's, you know, it's sister hormone in my own conversations in my head is cortisol, which is your stress hormone. And that's what's happening. It's like insulin and cortisol just can't wait to put fat on your belly. And it's like, ah, you know, and then when you go through menopause and your cycle stops, that's a whole nother conversation because now then, you know, like what fat, 
you know, on the inside of your knees. And I mean, it's just like silly, silly. And so anyway, and you're like back fat and where'd this come from and how this happened and all this stuff. Am I the only one? Am I seriously the only one? Like, let me know in the comments if you understand anything that I'm talking about. It's so frustrating because you really do feel like maybe, you know, like myself, I never did get a handle on everything before this all happened. And I'm like, it gets worse. Like that was like crazy. So talking about brain fog, that was my first clue that I didn't know was a clue. And I was looking up just some information because I wanted to find something that kind of said it better than I could. Because again, I am not alone. Thank you. You're 58 as well. That's awesome. Yep. I just turned 59 in January. So, you know, it, it all gets better people. It all gets better. I'm telling you. Um, but one of the, I have like six Six reasons why insulin insulin resistance can contribute to brain fog, and it's through several interconnected mechanisms. But one of them, not the only one, so frustrating, weight gain and stomach at 55 has been terrible. Yep. Yep, you understand 60, your waist. Yep. And that it is, it's just such a stinker. And I'm telling you, if you can change the way, the, the way that you're viewing weight loss, if you start to view it through the lens of insulin resistance, I'm telling you, when your insulin is high and when your sugar is high, you can't lose weight. But when you can actually begin to bring things down and then learn how to eat foods that don't that don't continue to spike your sugars all the time, your life can completely change. So my story is that when I realized that I could use targeted supplementation for my insulin and sugars, um, I was able to actually then go from a 2X down to a large in my 50s after my cycle stopped. 63 keto and still, yes. Oh, and still what? 63 keto, still brain fog, Judy? Tell me, I'd love to know. So one of the keys here for the um, for brain fog, this goes back to like, I wish I would have known this. Things I wish I would have known when it was happening to me. Hormone imbalance. So number one, I didn't know. Yes. Oh, so you still have brain fog. Okay. That's really good to know. I'll give you a resource here at the end. Um, and you can decide whether or not that's something that you're interested in. Um, I did not know hormone insulin was a hormone. That's number one, much less the fact that brain fog was connected to hormone imbalance in general. Like I had no idea. So hormone imbalance, insulin resistance often coexists. So ladies, listen up. It often coexists with other hormonal imbalances. So this is all connected and gain back 12 pounds for no reason. I'm so sorry. Judy, are you in my, in my, um, my Facebook group? I have a Facebook group called ditch insulin resistance for women. And, um, I just did a, a five day challenge in there and I'm telling you the second you can nail it down, it really does. You can actually shift the way your body's functioning from the inside out. But it says that it often coexists with other hormonal imbalances, such as dysregulation of cortisol, thyroid hormones, and sex hormones. These hormonal fluctuations can affect neurotransmitter levels and neurotransmitter signaling in the brain, contributing to cognitive dysfunction and brain fog. So the brain fog, oh, good. Yep. That would be wonderful. You, you know... We sometimes we just, I don't know, maybe we're just hard on ourselves. Maybe I was just hard on me. I mean, cause I, I spent, um, many years. I'm trying to, I'm trying to be realistic in my answer. I spent probably a good solid eight years asking the question, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? And my husband kept saying, there's nothing wrong with you. Stop saying that, you know, don't speak that over yourself. And I'm just like, what the heck is going on? And, um, you know, it wasn't until now that, I mean, well, not now, but it, now I understand looking back that these were the connections. So the first answer is that there's a hormone imbalance and insulin resistance really does kind of ramp up a lot of the other hormone issues. So maybe somebody, you know, that's not insulin resistant, isn't maybe having as hard of a time. They could be, but your situation might be different. And you're like, what the heck? Well, insulin resistance plays a key in this. So let me just like talk about it, a couple of other ones. The next one would be I'm um, talking about impaired glucose metabolism. 
So insulin resistance disrupts the body's ability to effectively utilize glucose for energy because, right, the insulin is supposed to get the glucose into the cell and it can't do it anymore. And so there's this, you can't utilize your glucose for energy. So number one, you're exhausted. And number two, you don't have the fuel inside of you for utilization of all of that glucose. That glucose is getting turned into fat, but also it's the primary source of fuel for the brain. And when cells become resistant to insulin, they may struggle to take up glucose efficiently. This is so huge. This can lead to fluctuations in brain energy levels, contributing to feelings of fatigue, mental fog, and difficulty concentrating. Is that you? That was me. Mine was, mine showed up in the form of an inability to multitask. And that was very challenging. I'm just saying. Um, the second or another reason, the third reason, because we started with hormones, the third one is inflammation. Insulin resistance. Yes. Yeah. Insulin resistance is associated with chronic low grade inflammation. We talked about this the other night um, throughout the body, including the brain. This is why they call it type three diabetes, insulin resistance of the brain, dementia. Inflammatory, inflammatory cytokines, cytokines can disrupt neurotransmitter balance and impair, impair neuronal, neuronal function, leading to cognitive impair and brain fog. Oh my gosh, you guys, like seriously, doesn't it feel good to get answers? Like it's not just you getting old. It's not just um, there's something wrong with you. I mean, I've had women come to me and I've had one woman, I've had many tell me about the effects of using adaptogenic herbs, which I'll talk about in a second, about the benefits. And I mean, they've given me a lot of great testimonies, but one specifically, I'll never forget. She messaged me and she said, I thought I had dementia. I was so afraid. I was so afraid. Um, oxidative stress, insulin resistance is also linked to increased oxidative stress, which occurs when there is an imbalance between free radicals and antioxidants in the body. Oxidative stress can damage cells, including neurons in the brain, and can contribute to cognitive decline and brain fog. Uh, that's uh, okay. And uh, disrupted sleep patterns. There's two left here. Disrupted sleep patterns. Um, that can insulin resistance can really mess up your sleep. And if that's you, you really do need to try to fix your sleep. Like go out and get yourself a magnesium glycinate and take it before bed so that you can maybe get better sleep. That's one piece of the puzzle. I take a stinky herb. If you want to know about stinky herb, you can put that in the comments below. I take a, a blend. I don't take, I, I used to love melatonin, but now it makes me feel drunk. So now I take these stinky herbs and they work for me, but you have to fix your sleep. You have to put a priority on fixing your sleep. Like I'm going to figure out in 2024 how to fix my sleep. My solution has been magnesium glycinate mixed with my stinky herbs because um, that whatever reason, it, that's just what works for me. But if you don't and you don't sleep well at night, your insulin resistance and your cortisol are up the next day. No bueno. We don't want that. So the sleep patterns are an, uh, an issue. Sleep disturbances have been linked to cognitive impairment, memory problems, and difficulty concentrating, all of which can contribute to brain fog. And y'all know that if you're not getting sleep, you're craving carbs the next day. <laughs> That's just a part of that whole insulin resistance being up the next day. You are like hangry, right? You want the carbs because your body wants energy fast, fast, like pine burning energy. Like, like, you know, hey, Anna, you know, like how when you, you burn pine, it burns hot and fast. You know, I know you guys on Instagram. Okay. I'm going to lose your stinky herbs if I don't see you. So hold on. I have to write you down because I, I won't see you. It'll go away. So Judy, MC came. Okay, I will try to find you. And if I can't find you, come back and find me because sometimes I go back and I look up names and they don't pop up. I got you. I got you 1968. Okay, so I'll write those down. Anyway, so what I'm saying is you have to really make that a priority. Like if you're going to have a goal for 2024, make sleep your goal. Okay, moving on, the very last one that they're talking about is microbiota, microbiota dysbiosis, which is your gut. You got to figure out your gut stuff, right? So the gut brain axis plays a significant role in cognitive function and mental health. 
super important. Insulin resistance can disrupt disrupt the balance of gut microbiota, biota, <laughs> leading to dysbiosis. You can tell I'm not a biologist, a scientist, or a doctor. Dysbiosis has been associated with inflammation, oxidative stress, and cognitive dysfunction, including brain fog. So when I first started having issues with my brain fog, like I said, it is very, um, it's very unsettling. I don't know. Thank you, Anna. You're so sweet. It, it, it's very Christy. <laughs> okay, I'm going to write you down too, Christy. See what I started? See what I started, Christy underline Cornet. Okay, I got you. I got you, girl. I'll find you. Um, it was very unsettling because you really do think something's wrong. And so you're trying to figure that out. And then funny, well, not funny, fascinatingly enough, then many years later, my mom ended up with dementia. And then we took care of her for five years. And, um, you know, that's just, these are not things to play around with. And if insulin resistance is in any way, form, or fashion, oh, you're so sweet, connected to, um, no, you're awesome. You are awesome. Thank you for being here. Um, Anyway, connected to dementia, which is really the findings of this are becoming more and more clear. Like I think that other countries have been calling it type, two, type 3 diabetes for a really long time. Um, and we just haven't over here in America. Uh, I'm not much interested then in continuing any kind of an insulin resistance journey. You know, five years of taking care of my mom, that was a very beautiful season but it was also extremely hard. Dementia is no joke, right? Because it just isn't. We could go on a tangent with that one. I could talk about that for hours. Um, but my point being that when there's a connection, so, you know, I grew up with a type two dad that was insulin dependent and he di died at 63 with all of these medications. And now I'm the only one in my family that avoided type two. And, um, and there was a lot, I'm Italian. So in my, in my older family, my larger family, I can't say that just in my immediate, but in my larger family, there is a lot of obesity and type two diabetes just because of our Italian culture. And so, um, <clears throat> to be on a mission to help people with insulin resistance, like you can get your life back. Y you don't have to be afraid of a lot of things when you can turn back insulin resistance. And that's why, and then I'll, I'm going to make a plug now one more time for my first to know list. That's why when you have targeted supplements that actually work and type two people are getting the results that they are getting their testimonies, not my claims ever, their testimonies of their morning sugars going down, of their weight being lost. There is a, a glucose product in my, my, my suite of products that I talk about that is sold out. And every day I'm talking to people in the background, when is it coming back? And I'm like, I don't know yet. I'm emailing the company. But in the meantime, I'm putting together a first to know list. And Instagram, I apologize. You have to DM me. But if you are already uh, a customer of mine and you know that it's been sold out and you're waiting for it, put me in the comments and I'll put you on my first to know list. And the reason why is because I am like a hawk waiting for it to come. I check a lot because I want my customers to get it again. Um, but also too, then I want to, I want to be able to bless people who have been so patient. So I'm going to do random drawings. Um, me and a couple of other girls are going to put together our list and we're going to do some random drawings for people so that, um, so just to say thank you, because I know it's a stinker when something's sold out, but you know, when you've got popular things, what are you going to do? You just have to move forward. <laughs> Anyway, but bringing down insulin and bringing down sugars is of the utmost importance, importance in your world, not just so that you can avoid type two, not just so that you can avoid dementia, although obviously those would be on the on the higher end of the reasons why. But what if it's just because then you can stop worrying about the side effects of what you are already taking? I didn't even know that certain things had side effects like the one that starts with MET. I did not know that until my mom and we were taking care of her. And now I, then I understood very quickly that, oh, that can cause digestive issues. And when somebody has dementia, they can't assess their bodily functions. Like this creates all sorts of issues, right? And so it's like, 
some people just don't want side effects. They don't want side effects of the um, weight loss um, injections. They don't want side effects of certain meds. They don't want a lot of things. And so wouldn't it be nice if you were able to maybe use a little natural remedy more so and go into a different direction on your own? So I teach both the targeted supplementation and then I also teach food. So if you don't know about my Facebook group, that's Ditch Insulin Resistance for Women. And I do a challenge in there. And then we make food because I'm Italian and that was a big thing for me. I didn't think I could trade out my foods. But very specifically for the brain fog, I'm just going to tell you about one thing. I'm just going to give you one thing. The, the one thing that I did when I was 45-ish and I was having a hard time with brain fog and multitasking is, number one, I'm, I'm going to tell you two things. Number one, what I didn't know, I'll tell you what I didn't know, and I'll tell you what I, what I did and found out. The one thing that I didn't know was I didn't understand how insane when you are insulin resistant, the impact of food is on your, on your ability to think clearly. Because if you're constantly eating foods that are spiking your sugars and causing your body to create more insulin, which is creating more inflammation, which is creating brain fog, plus you're not, I, I had no, I knew none of this, none of this. Plus your insulin, it, you know, is not able to get your glucose into your cell for fuel. So now you don't have fuel for your brain. Like now it makes all perfect sense to me. It's kind of like, wow, boom. I, you know, like I should have had a V8 thought process. It's like, wow, had I understood this cycle, I would have changed my food sooner, but I didn't. So instead, what I ended up doing was I had somebody that was connected to me and she said, you know what, you should try this. This, uh, this is an adaptogenic herb and, and uh, it's, a, it's a mind brightener. It's kind of almost like the light gets turned on. And I'm like, okay, well, what happened was I was in a position where I needed to multitask at a very high level. And so when I started using that, um, yep, it's just like that. It's almost like your mind goes like this and it gets turned on and not with a jitteriness, not with a, there's not like a, um, like somebody told me that they were using this. This is a customer of mine started using this. And this is her testimony. I don't make this claim. She was using it for her ADD. And she said, I loved, I, I love it so much because I was taking, and there's this one, um, there's this one med that starts with like add, like you add up your numbers and it ends with all as in all of us combined. And she said, I, I, I don't need to take that because of this. And she said, the highs and the lows were too much for me. So that was her conversation about that. And, you know, it's like, if there was a mind brightener, would you want to know about that? Right. So um, anyway, so I started taking that 13 years ago and I haven't stopped. <laughs> You try to make me, <laughs> but it's seriously because I want to be able to function at a higher level. I want to be able to run a business. I want to be able to, you know, like keep up with my, oh, there's my, my thumb on Instagram. I want to be able to like hang out with my grandbabies. I want to be able to have energy to keep up with them. I want to be able to like study marketing. I want to be able to do all of the things that I want to be able to do that is in my heart. I don't want to like, you know, the thought to me was I raised my kids and then I'm in my forties and now this is it. This is as good as it gets. Hi, Sarah. Good to see you. And that was like, no, like I, I can't go down cognitively. I have to go, go back, go back. My kids have now moved out. I go back. I need to be able to think clearly. I need to be able to function. So if you're looking for anything, thank you, Sarah. You're so sweet. We had a we had a business meeting today, so I'm all decked out. Well, not decked out. I'm in my jean jacket, but I took the time to curl my hair today because we were at a, we had a meeting. Um, but if you're looking for something for literally to have more energy and to help you crush fatigue and you want to help with your brain fog, you can, and again, Instagram, I'm sorry, you have to message me this because it'll go away on me. You can put purple in the comments and I'm going to tell you about a purple packet that I use still to this day that has three supplements in it, adaptogenic herbs and B vitamins time released. And I'm telling you, there's something in there for memory. There's something in there for mood brightening. If you know what I'm saying, mind brightening, 
And a lot of women do not know that when they are, when they are deficient in certain B vitamins, there can be anxiety and depression. So remember, I talk a lot about how, what if you can fill in certain nutritional deficiencies and that fixes something like for somebody who has thyroid issues, what if you're just low on iodine? Now I'm not a doctor, but I'm just saying there's a connection but we're not told that we could possibly have deficiencies. You see, we don't have any med deficiencies, do we? They don't exist. And that was my question, not about the deficiency, but that was my question. Oh, you guys, Judy, I'll put it down for you too. I'm going to find you, Judy. Um, when my dad had a lazy Susan full of medicine when he passed at 63. Aren't, aren't we modern medicine? You know, when we went through everything that we went through in um, the, the whole 2020 situation, I live in the state of Minnesota. Minnesota is the home of the Mayo Clinic. So prior to the shutdown, this actually had nothing to do with the shutdown. Prior to the shutdown, I had my mom who had dementia and she was in, you know, independent living, assisted living. We did a lot of different things. She would have to go to a nursing home to recover from something, or she was in a, you know, at the hospital, she kind of made the rounds of a few things. And then I also had my brother at the same time. And he was, um, he had had um, a heart attack and then he had a heart surgery. And when he had his heart surgery, he had a stroke. And so for two years prior to the shutdown, he was in Minnesota in all of these different types of facilities, LTACs and nursing homes and, you know, um, emergency rooms and hospitals and ICUs, you name it. Just We just made a lot of rounds. And I remember having this wake up moment. Here I am living in the state of Minnesota. And actually, we do a lot of our business conferences down in Rochester, right by the Mayo Clinic. And um, I love Rochester. It's great. But I remember having this wake up moment going, okay, I'm, I'm confused. I thought that I was in the state of Minnesota, home of the Mayo Clinic. Why is the healthcare system this way? What's going on? I was really, really confused. And I could give you many, many stories about that. And um, I mean, I was just flabbergasted. So I felt like there were these markers in my life, like after my dad died and the whole lazy Susan and now living in, oops, we just froze there for a second. Now living in, in uh, Minnesota, I just, hmm, I best be my own advocate, right? Like it really just confirmed to me the journey that I was already on to, I'm going to take control of my own health. And then when the shutdown did come, that, that, that was it. That was it. Done done, done. I'm taking care. I'm, I'm being my own advocate. I'm taking this all to another level. And I'm going to tell people what I know. And that's now I'm here. And, uh, you know, Facebook group and all. I did not. That's a really great question. So Deb is asking, did I personally ever have medical testing to determine insulin resistance? I did not. But this is why when I was in my 20s with my first baby, I was gestational diabetic. So here, my dad, my dad started his just it started his type two diabetes when he was 35. I go and I have a baby. I'm gestational diabetic. I'm taking my blood four times a day. My fingers were marred with little holes and they were painful. Tested my blood, kept it within whatever ranges. But I did have an almost 10 pound baby because that's what happens when you're gestational diabetic. I deliver him. They test my blood. It goes away. So in, that's, that is insulin resistance right there. My second baby, I'm hypoglycemic, which is just the exact, the opposite side of the exact same coin of insulin resistance. Then my dad, so I'm 30 when my dad dies, probably when I'm about 27, he's um, hitting dialysis and he's needing a kidney transplant and I'm a match. And at the time, the University of Minnesota said, yep, pretty much, no, you won't be giving your dad a kidney because he was 35 when he Con when he started, when he was diagnosed with his type two diabetes and because of my past. So I did not have testing to know. Um, 
how do I say that? I mean, I guess sort of, but not because I was thinking, oh, I, I think I'm insulin resistant. No, it's because I was pregnant and they found it then. And I didn't put things together. I, I still did nothing till my 40s. Did you know that you can be insulin resistant literally for 5, 10, 15, 20 years before it shows up in your glucose levels? Because your body is going to do such a good job of continuing to create insulin to keep those sugars down. It's just going to keep working like a little workhorse because God made it to be so incredibly powerful. Like it's looking to, to find its, its balance all the time. And, um, you know, so it can be a long time because people go, but my blood work is fine. Yep. It, they should be doing an insulin fasting, a fasting insulin test, which is uh, insulin is a hormone. And they're not. They're doing blood glucose tests. And then they're telling you that your blood is fine until the next day it's not. And you're pre-diabetic. It's a very frustrating process. And then the biggest frustration, that's why I talk about weight a lot. Because number one, that this is how I lost my own weight. Um, but also, too, because... Um, it's even though we want to out of our own, like we know it's wise to say, I'm more interested in my health than my weight, like than what I, than my size. I won't say weight because we know that weight, our weight, if you know, the, the, the more in, uh, in balance we are with our weight, the better our health is. We, you know, for the most part, right. We know that to be true. So let's just talk about size. Oh yes. I am much more concerned about my, my, uh, my own health and my concern for my sugars than I am about the size of the clothing that I wear. But that's really not how we feel. And I know this because that's where I, I didn't change out my, I didn't do anything because I thought, oh, I should change my, I should take care of my health. <laughs> I did it because number one, my mom wouldn't leave me alone about my sugars. That's why I started the targeted supplementation to begin with. That's the trio that I talk about all the time. But then number two, it was after my cycle stopped and I was nine months without a cycle that all of a sudden fat started appearing in places that I was not very excited about. I'm like, I better change my food. Oh, dear Lord, I've got to figure this out. And that's when I started to ditch processed food and I kind of fumbled my way through. I never went, never found a program, never start help, got help from a coach. Didn't I just started researching and changing a few things here and there. And that's why I tell women, listen, this can be a very good journey for you. You don't have to sit with shame and guilt on you because of the marketing that they have given you to tell you that you should either have figured this out or you should buy their $1,200 program. Jacqueline says, that is so crazy. I thought my doctor would be looking for things like that, but they don't. They don't, Jacqueline. It's more of a sick care system, not a health healthcare system. That is 100% true. And I am, nobody is more surprised than I am at the testimonies that are coming from type 2 diabetics. Nobody's more surprised than I am. I'm just like, wow, God, you really did give us answers. And now everybody just needs to know that this exists. So anyway, that's why my first my first to know list, if you need to be on my first to know list when it comes back in stock, like I will let you know, two of the three are still available. But I just know that there are people that are, they're like, when's it coming back? And I'm like, I know I'm working on an answer. I'm working on an answer. And not only that, but I'm also working on potentially getting some inventory through another channel. And um, I'll let you know, but it's, I can't announce anything because it'll go so fast. So that's just where I'm at with that. But Anyway, so anybody, and, and again, Instagram, don't put this down there. You have to DM me. But if you're on Facebook, if you want to be on my first to know list for when the glucose product comes back into stock, put me in the comments and I'll put you on a, you know, on a list. Yes. And you know what? Well, and that's a good point. So she's talking about food. You have to fix your food. You have to fix what got you into the pickle to begin with. I absolutely agree. Absolutely. That's why I teach the foods that I do. Oh, from India. Oh, what precautions? Well, we're talking about food. And it is interesting, right? Because insulin resistance is literally in all of the other countries. I mean, it really is not just America. It's not. But 
like she's saying, keeping your carbs at 20, 20 a day or less and allowing your body to heal. You have to allow your body to heal. This is not quick fix. Even she's saying in about a year, yep. And it can take a year for your morning sugars to come down. It can take about a year for your um, blood pressure to come down. It can take time. Ventura, California, fantastic. Oh, California, very nice. Nice and beautiful weather. I'm in Minnesota. So we think about California and Florida a lot up here for sure. So anyway, all right. So that's what I've got for you tonight. It's so good to chat with you guys again. So if you need my list or if you need to be on my first to know list, put me. And um, if you want to know about the purple packet for brain fog, you can put purple in the comments and I'll get back to you on that. But in the meantime, have a super blessed night, you guys. And um, I will be uh, collecting names for the list and all that good stuff. It, well, Mary, that is a very, Marianne, that is a very important piece of the puzzle is keeping your carbs way, way low. I know you guys on Instagram, your comments are going to go away. I'm not going to be able to see them. And when I go to look up your name, it doesn't, um, it doesn't stick. So I'm writing them down, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to find you. If I can't find you, you have to find me. Thanks for the hearts. You guys are so nice. But I'll jump off. SF, I'd have you. Oh, for the stinky herb, I'll put purple. <laughs> okay, you're so funny. I offered to, or I thought about too many things tonight. Okay, all right. I'm so glad it makes sense what's wrong with you. Yes, you're so welcome. You're so welcome, Marianne. I know, I'm telling you, listen, when women, when that light bulb goes on, all of a sudden, the shame can fall off because this is not about there's something wrong with you. It's about hormones. It's about hormones and you're not crazy. And there can be really, really, really simple fixes. I'm just telling you, deficiencies can fix things quickly, much more quickly than anything. Okay, very good. All right. Have a super good night, you guys. And I will see you this week. I'm not sure. I have to check my schedule every day. So, all right. See you guys later. Have a really good night. Bye.